Welcome to an episode of The Bonafide, where we're going over a commentary and explanation of Sahih Muslim. Suleiman is going to be teaching with Al Maghrib uh, a class that is going to be covering essentially spiritual development through Sahih Muslim, right? I know we've been sitting here for a couple of days together, kind of uh, brainstorming and developing marketing plans and producing content and stuff. But I know one of the things that you stated was how this program or this class, like there's nothing like it out there in the world today in terms of how Sahih Muslim is presented and taught. And as I understand it, for the most part, um, Sahih Muslim is either taught as a, here is a referential commentary, because Sahih Muslim is, in a, a, I look at it as an appendix, Okay. really. Like it's just a it's an encyclopedia. You open up encyclopedia and you start reading, right? Or if you are somebody of knowledge, you're going through an encyclopedia and each um, each aspect of the encyclopedia, uh, like whatever the thing is covered, somebody's giving commentary on it. Academically, it's very dry. It's very boring. It's thematically, I guess it's thematically organized. But even then, it's just like, it's dry, right? So let me ask you this. How you're making it unboring? <laughs> unboring. Yes. Oh, there you go. There's the class name. Yes. <laughs> unboring. Not unbroken. Uh, unbroken, unboring. Yeah. So, Bismillah, the first thing is uh, usually, traditionally, the class or a class on Sahih Muslim. Uh, in the Ijazah context, it's the recitation of the hadith and okay. nothing else. In the Sharh context, it's the explanation of the hadith okay. back to back. Right? Sure. Uh, what we're trying to do in this course, uh, and we'll make it extremely unique, inshallah, um, based on what's been taught so far. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we want to introduce Imam Muslim himself. Who okay. is Imam Muslim? Most people don't really care and that's not the reason they're coming, right? But yeah. if they did know who Imam Muslim was, yeah. it gives an entire story, a legacy surrounding the entire class of Sahih Muslim yeah. uh, and more appreciation for hadith in general, uh, more appreciation and inspiration to do something yourself with your life, Sure. right? Uh, for example, one of the comprehensive activities that we're focusing on in class how did Imam Muslim even have the time to produce something like this? And one of the original causes, aside from inspiration, is that he had passive income. Okay. Right. So this is a side note, but this is something we will explore like a in business. the class. He had a, a couple ways of sustaining himself independently. Uh -huh. And if he did not have that time, Allahu Alam, if he would have pursued what he pursued with regards to this legacy of I, Imam Muslim. I mean, it almost, it almost seems like the, uh, that tends to be the trend with many of our esteemed legendary scholars and imams of our tradition and history i.e for example imam Abu hanifa he had a textile business that enabled him to be continue to pursue the projects that he i mean his uh, knowledge and study as well um and so uh and like somebody like ibn hazm himself was just really wealthy and somebody there was like this whole thing where somebody asked him uh, or I guess it was more or less a debate, an intellectual witty debate where some guy was like, hey, I studied under the light of the lamppost, uh, you know, implying that he was really poor. And Ibn Hazm will go, well, I studied under the light of the chandeliers. Like I had so many more opportunities to do other things. And yet I chose to study this uh, dean. Um, but like the fact that they it allowed them that flexibility to do it is is something that seems to be a trend but not a lot of people tend to talk about is that true uh it's a trend depending on who you're looking at um okay. because generally speaking you find scholars are not really sustained unless they're sustained themselves right. or by their families or they inherited wealth or yeah. uh they have passive income or there's a muslim treasury you know sustaining them right well, in like, our times even the prophet muhammad i said them, them. right he was i mean he had his trade and then at the same time the trade of his wife khadija radiallahu anha and that kind of helps sustain him while he pursued the dawah, right? Absolutely. Uh, let, let us get back to one point, which okay. is, is what, which is the class is being taught in a very unique, comprehensive way. Yeah. Uh, the objective of the class we're focusing on uh, really strong spiritual development, sure, intellectual development through the study, you know, of, of uh, hadith and the commentaries and issues related to hadith. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we're going to touch upon an important subject relevant to our times, sure. and it's still relevant and will continue to be relevant, which is the preservation of hadith. Okay. Right. Something a lot of Muslims might not realize is important, but when they study it, they see this is something that that's a prevention and a protection 
protection for future doubts, sure. as well as a cure for those who might be struggling. Uh, so imagine basically we're taking uh, many different ahadith on relevant contemporary practical issues uh, that affect all of us, everyday life, right? Your work, uh, your environment, your relationships, mm -hmm. your emotions, your spirituality, and so on and so forth. We're covering all of these comprehensively. Okay. Uh, we have really interesting activities that allow us to take things to the next level. Uh, we're addressing issues from a unique angle uh, with some What matters. kind of activities are we talking about? So every activity is different. I don't mm -hmm. want to reveal too much. Okay. We have some individual, some uh, group, some partner activities. Uh, we have some that in previous uh, many courses have caused people to basically break down in tears, uh, make some real changes. Is it more so like an idea of self-discovery, spiritual discovery? So a lot of it discovery? is self-discovery because okay. one of the most important questions is who are you? Okay. Right? Who who are you really? Sure. A lot of times we just... It's an exploration into one's own identity. Right. And it's, it's extremely important to know who we are, what direction we're going into because it affects our everyday decisions. Okay. Uh, and affects our religiosity as well. Okay. So knowing who we are, discovering who we are, uh, discovering our relationship with Allah, how to sustain that long term, not just at the moment when you feel your iman boosting uh, and feeling like you want to make change, but then going back to your regular or old lifestyle. Sure. We want things that help sustain our growth spiritually, intellectually, personally throughout uh, the rest of the year as well. Yeah. And some of these objectives as Muslims, we try to take, uh, for example, from Ramadan. Okay. Right. Always you hear the emphasis. It's not just about Ramadan. It's about the rest of the year. So how can you take something from a class like this so that it sustains you for the rest of the year? Okay. Uh, and what hadith will we be covering that have a direct, practical, relevant impact on our lives uh, so that there is some change, inshallah? Uh, and then the activities that are very comprehensive. Uh, and there's a huge emphasis on activities because they are one of the most efficient ways to learn. Okay, so Especially it's not like, kind of like workshop. Workshop, spiritual development, I would say it's a spiritual roller coaster okay. for some people. <laughs> All right. Which could be which could be great. Uh, at times, that's what it takes for us to make some change in our lives. Is, is it that up and down happens because one is really coming to terms with and facing the realities of their spiritual situation? It could be that. Okay. Uh, at times, removing our own masks to ourselves is, for many people, frightening. Okay. But so being real. Being real. Okay. Being real. A being bona fide Muslim. <laughs> being bona fide. You like yeah. the word bona fide. Huh? I do. I do. Mashallah. Just kind of give some context here and for you guys as well. Um, one of the things that people were talking about when I was working with Ammar al-Shukri, Ustaz uh, Ammar, Sheikh Ammar, depending on where you're at in the, in, in the Al-Maghrib uh, community. Um, so initially what we did was uh, we wanted to teach them the names and attributes of Allah. Right. But we came to a realization of the reality that, you know, a weekend is not enough time to cover all 99 names. Um, and so but at the same time, I'm like, but I want to know about the 99 names. Right. So it's like, all right, let's get together. Let's do these episodes called the 99 names. And but the class was like, oh, how are we going to teach it? So we came, you know, came up with the story idea. He got some feedback from other people. And, the, and what ended up developing was, hey, here's a weekend, two days, really, Saturday, Sunday. Each day is a story in the life of a character, an intense day, and the names of Allah that would come up within it. Okay, But the things people didn't know about this, right? They didn't know about this, the fact that his class was like that. Um, and so people were like, well, if you're going to teach the 99 names online in like discussion form, what are you going to do about his class, which became his majesty? I'm like... Well, the 99 names are not covered in his class. Specific names that are, uh, I guess, contextual to and relevant to the individual in a life of a profile of an individual that would be maybe a young professional college student dude in the cases that he might face into or a, um, uh, or a young mother or super mom type of individual. So similarly, like Sahih Muslim is not 99 hadith. We're talking 3,000 plus yeah. Hadith. So, and it's a huge compilation, a legacy whose uh, fruits have lasted uh, over a thousand years. So, I mean, there's definitely something there, one of the greatest masterpieces of uh, Hadith literature uh, of our tradition. So, uh, like, I, I don't imagine you're going to be covering all 3,000 Hadith in the weekend. Of course not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's definitely an important... Uh, parallel study or observation or examination of uh, story yeah, uh, and that uh, that of Imam Muslim as well as relevant stories, yeah. characters within our times. Sure. It could be the college student. It could be the mom, the dad. could be the divorcee, the newly uh, newlywed. It could be anybody. Right. Right. Uh, and seeing how these ahadith that we're studying can be uh, practically applied to okay. all of our lives. One of the things you mentioned in a discussion before 
uh, maybe not in this video, but in, in a previous thing where you, we talk, you mentioned how one of the things that is understood about Imam Muslim and his work, which is the Sahih Muslim, is that it's comprehensive. Yes. Right. It covers literally every aspect of one's life and lifestyle of this world and the hereafter. Right. And so that's why there's so many hadith. Right. So the question now is, um, like, what are some of the more um, outstanding uh, aspects of the comprehensive? Like, what are some of the topics that you do cover? Great question. Uh, Obviously, there there are still developments being made. But generally speaking, with a book like Sahih Muslim, with a compilation that is comprehensive, Jami'ah, like Sahih Muslim, uh, for the purpose of this class uh, most of the hadith that we're selecting are relevant to people's daily lives right so we don't want to jump for example into the chapter on prayer and focus only on prayer okay uh, or too much about let's say tahara purification right rather we want to take things that are perhaps being questioned all the time uh, as a common issue okay. culturally let's say amongst Muslims uh, issues relating uh, let's say from the book of marriage which is very common uh, you have uh, some issues about the book of dreams, which is an interesting topic. Uh, you have some discussion on the book of mercy, the chapter on mercy. Okay. Uh, and some of the hadith that we're covering, we're covering from a unique angle. Uh, some of them might be commonly heard, but not fully understood or in depth uh, understood. So we're taking different lessons from some of these hadith. Uh, we have some about Jannah and Nar, Paradise Hellfire. We have some about the chapter on tafsir and how that's relevant to hadith and that how that's relevant to our daily lives. Uh, so the chapter on there's a so there's a hadith section on tafsir itself. Yes, because a lot of tafsir we understand either the Quran uh, explains the Quran or the Sunnah the hadith explains the Quran. Okay. Right, and that's like the second stage, and then you have other stages as well. Gotcha. Uh, but how would that carry out in a spiritual development scenario in, in terms of like, uh, like are we going into covering doing tafsir in this class? It's not that we're covering tafsir, although we are covering two, at least two narrations related to tafsir that okay. are heart softening okay. uh, for a spiritual revolution. Interesting. Inshallah. Can you so, give us a sneak peek of that? <laughs> well, here's what I'll tell you. Okay. One of the most important objectives of this class, and this is from my perspective, and this is from experience teaching this class, uh, one of the most important objectives is to provide a customized yeah. uh, spiritual regimen, let's say, yeah. that lasts after the class. Okay. Why? Because... Of course, we all have the spiritual boost. What can I do to keep going? What can so I do every time I So basically to did? leave with a, a personalized spiritual training program. There you go. Okay. Really? That's the objective. That's the objective. Inshallah, okay. we hope to fulfill the objective with as many students as possible. Okay. Inshallah. What would be the expectation of somebody who comes in and leaves, like for them to be doing, for example? Great question. Uh, I would assume for the student who attends, you know, the, uh, the entire class, inshallah. Uh-huh. Uh, for those who attend, they'll find throughout the class, we are adding different uh, elements to this spiritual regimen. So okay. it's not like a one activity where you sit down here, go ahead and, and create your spiritual regimen. Okay. Rather, throughout the class, there are different elements, both from the story of Imam Muslim and the relevant characters of our daily times or our daily lives, uh, as well as the hadith that we're covering with this interesting, unique commentary. Combining these together, creating elements that provide a spiritual regimen okay. that lasts. And throughout all of these two days and, and some hours, we are also uh, basically using the activity sessions as another opportunity to add more elements to this regimen. So that by the final day, there's not just the spiritual boost, uh, the shedding of tears, let's say, at the time, but rather now there's something that is more comprehensive in terms of how can I take all of this uh, regimen and move on with it after okay. the class, inshallah. Cool. So essentially... Um what like in your experience what have you found that people are essentially looking for when it comes to approaching this subject honestly yeah. most people when it comes to hadith are not very interested okay that's the reality many people are not interested when okay. you're speaking about percentages sure right so if this class was called sahih muslim yeah probably not get that many people okay right and if it was only about the, the commentary on Sahih Muslim with no stories, no activities, no regimen, no I objective. I mean, even like for somebody like myself, I didn't really come to appreciate nor want to seek out the importance of Sahih Muslim until after so many years of coming to understand and appreciate all of the other things and what Sahih Muslim really means and all that. But somebody who hasn't even done that, it's just like, Why? Right, great question. So one of the uh, one of the focuses, as we said, is on the spiritual aspect. Sure. Right. So where do you take your spirituality from? 
what co- what kind of lectures do you want to help develop your spirituality? Oh, well, honestly, so we have the angle. Don't really work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, but I'm saying in general yeah. for the general audience, what works for everyone? There okay. are different lenses of spiritual development. Well, different, different things work for different people. Right. So okay. you have, for example, sometimes the focus purely on stories. Sure. Sometimes uh, focus purely on Sira. Okay. Focus purely on Quran or Tafsir. Right here, we're taking what the compilation that is comprehensive, Jamia, yeah. uh, Sahih Muslim, which provides the uh, foundation of so much of our faith, which a lot of Muslims are still not realizing. Right, our entire religion is on the Quran and the authentic Hadith. Right, and the most authentic books of Hadith, uh, which nothing compares to, yeah. are Bukhari and Muslim. Right, so we're using these as the foundation why to provide people with uh, a taste of that spiritual development as well as a taste of Hadith in general appreciate hadith and the uh, depth and the importance of hadith in our daily lives how your life can really change by studying hadith with uh, scholarly commentary because everything in our lives revolves for us as muslims around our faith okay so when you study something that's comprehensive it applies to everything sure so in general i would say the the benefit is that it helps you emotionally spiritually uh, mentally physically uh, financially uh, depending on how you study and, and tackle the subjects. Okay. Right. And we are planning, inshallah, to tackle basically most of these issues, right? The core subjects that we're covering uh, include basically uh, a complete and genuine spiritual development or regimen. So, in- so, so, in your sub- so, so, in your experience, like the people when they would learn from you on this subject, like, okay, they're not looking for hadith, they're looking for spiritual fulfillment. Yes. Uh, but is there anything that they are. But like, did they identify or do they already know what some of the issues are? They kind of have an idea. What's the... To be honest, no. Most of the people don't have, uh, let's say, there are no prerequisites. Okay. Right? So this class is for everyone. Sure. At the same time, because of the level of appreciation in hadith that we can take from uh, Muslim, Sahih Muslim, you find that the most advanced students are also benefiting as well. Okay. So it's a class for everyone, in short. Is it because on an advanced level, you're so academically focused, you don't really go back to the foundation? of spiritual development it could be that for, okay. for every individual it's different right for some people they're looking there are some people who attended the class in the past uh, or attended classes like this in the past purely to learn the hadith of imam muslim okay right they want to study sahih muslim right. uh, little did they realize that it comes with a lot of other benefits sure. like the spiritual aspect personality focus because i mean i remember one of uh one of the f- one of these students of knowledge that i was asking about hey what is the real benefit of studying hadith right and this is a person who studied all like six seven eight nine however many books of <laughs> different hadith compilations there are he said that you know over the and, and he did it in a year as part of his final final year of study where he went through all of these major works like 6 a.m to like 8 p.m six days a week something like that and so he was explaining that although it was a very rigorous time right and very at times he felt like he was burning out the thing that was unforgettable was the fact that you're just day in and day out hearing the prophet muhammad so said this yes. and he did that yes. so the fact that he was day in and day out just getting to know the prophet so i said i'm getting to know the very messenger that brought this uh brought us this way of life this yeah. system of faith to connect with our creator uh directly without any intermediaries or intercessors and so on um like to that in itself, he mentioned was something that was. Um, but I think it was through the rigor of that that he realized it on his own. But I think it would be an even greater benefit if we point out, hey guys, look, like this is what you do, like why you're doing it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, one of the one of the greatest feedbacks was igniting a strong love and connection to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Feeling like, hey, this is, for many people who attend in the past, for example. Uh, one of the, the most common feedbacks was this is the first time I attend a class uh, that focuses so much on authentic hadith or hadith in general Yeah. Uh, that it gave a greater appreciation not just for the Prophet them, a connection to the Sahaba as well who are narrating all of these hadith witnessing these things hearing these things so they feel more love for Rasulullah uh, for the message in general uh, increase in faith uh, pride in their identity as Muslims uh, motivation to move forward in their faith as well for many people okay what feedback would you have for people who are seeking spiritual development and may or may not necessarily have access to attend the seminar? May or may not. Okay, interesting. Right. Uh, I would say... Uh, well, let me say this, because there's usually people of three types, right? There's people who's like, yo, I'm going, doesn't matter, right? It's in my city, I got to go, right? That's not my concern. Um, the people that I'm wondering about is 
who might be on the fence, right? And at the same time, people who um, would maybe potentially like to go, but it's not necessarily in their city. So uh, what options do you have for these two folks? Obviously, what would you say to the person who's on the fence? <laughs> Obviously, to the one on the fence, I'd say uh, there are certain opportunities in life yeah. when they pass you by uh, and you choose basically, uh, let's say, ignore, reject, yeah. abandon, avoid. Uh, there are certain checkpoints in our lives that help us take things to the next level. And oftentimes we think that there are simply... Uh, a spiritual boost, just a small bit of spiritual nourishment. But again, one of the core objectives of this class is so it's not a spiritual donut where it's, it's not it's a spiritual sweet, but cup. it's a void, is, but it's void of nutrition. Absolutely. So this is something that, as I said, the objective and all of the activities and all of the elements have been uh, constructed meticulously to provide something that is lasting for the individual, okay. where they can look back and say, "I know that that class was not just another." let's say, cup of spiritual faith or a boost. Rather, this is something that made an impact in my life, right? Okay. Uh, now, obviously, these are claims, yeah. right? And people will be like, well, is that really how it is? Is this just uh, to get us off the fence? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants good for us, uh, he he allows us or facilitates for us the knowledge of the religion, okay. right? Okay. But that requires us to take that step towards that knowledge. Sure. So when an opportunity like a spiritual development seminar that's comprehensive, comes to you take the opportunity see what it's about at least friday see what it's about and right. then make a decision from there but don't allow shaitan to trick you into justifying reasons not to go okay but as for people who don't have access think yeah, about these people. If people like this video where it would be going whether it be it's on youtube or wherever right people across the world would have access to seeing it uh and they might hear of this opportunity but not can don't necessarily have the means of checking it out i would say two things the yeah. first many times uh i'll say this very frankly People have a lot of gems and resources in their community in terms of scholarly figures or people of knowledge or okay. trustworthy, authentic, let's say, teaching imams. Sure. They don't take advantage, but when do they attend events when somebody from outside comes, a okay. guest speaker? This is problematic. If you have a gem, a treasure in your community, attend their classes, attend their halaqas, attend their uh, events and lectures and so on and so forth. See first what your community is offering. Well, one of the things I would think is like, yes, people might be even aware of what the community is offered, but the presentation of it is not so much it's more so in a raw format right okay the the steak hasn't been seasoned and cooked to a juicy medium rare so that when you slice into it it'd be like wow this is amazing it's more so it's like hey here's a cow uh i'll help you slaughter it but it's up to you to cook it well two things first sometimes it's uh, to get to a greater level of happiness success knowledge uh spiritual development and even securing our faith in yeah. the future sometimes you do have to go through the dry stuff okay sometimes you just have to so, so then the question, stick with it in the beginning but so, the second point before yeah. you before you ask the second point is make suggestions in your communities sure. give feedback sometimes people complain to their communities or about their communities and they never provide feedback because oftentimes they'll there's no change because there's no feedback like a lot of messages, I'll ask them, do you have a feedback box, survey, something? They say, people don't care. Mm. I'll say, provide an opportunity and see who does what, who says what. Okay. They start making changes. They ask people, what do you want? Right? So when people start interacting and engaging with their communities more, volunteering more, working in the mission more, you feel like this is your community. Right? You should feel like this is your community. You should speak up. You should say, I, you know, we need these kinds of programs. We have these types of people. We have, you know, let's say, 50 people are interested. Give us this weekly series about this in this fashion. Okay. So one thing is people simply don't try. And I, I think we should always try. Reach out to your community. Engage. Volunteer. Be connected. Uh, the second is, again, at times you have to go through the dry stuff to reach a greater level of knowledge. It doesn't work for everyone. And okay. I'm not saying it is for everyone. Well, let me, the question that I have now is like, okay, so because what, what you're doing is you're packaging it in a way he's like and, and developing a system and a presentation so that the individual can leave with their own personal training regiment right. for them to continue. So the person who doesn't have that packaging, that setup that's delivered to them, how are, are there any tools or suggestions for the attendee to that that they can apply to themselves so that, hey, wherever you go, regardless of what the source of knowledge is, regardless of how well presented it is or not, that you can use this method or this tool to for to extract some gems for yourself. It would be difficult because I'm basically I would basically be summarizing the two days and some hours activities and and topics because okay. they've been chosen so carefully, right? Right. Uh, but in general, knowledge will allow us to to basically move forward. Okay. I know it sounds basic, 
But if somebody is not going to be able to attend a class like this, yeah. knowledge, consistent knowledge will help you move forward in all areas of life. So find scholarly figures, uh, authentic books from authentic public uh, publishers, sure. uh, any opportunity to grow, make dua, uh, surround yourself with good people and so on and so forth. A lot of it is self-discovery. A lot of it is spiritual uh, growth, but there is an intellectual aspect to it okay. because knowledge does allow us to move forward in our spirituality. Right? We find that an increase in knowledge at times, if it's taken in properly, transformed internally, and acted upon, helps us spiritually. Okay. Right. So it's hard to summarize two days and some hours for somebody who well, can't I'm attend. Well, I don't, I don't think I'm asking to ask uh, to, to summarize the two days, but like, I know like one thing for me that has worked out, and this is something that I picked up from just corporate training seminars and things like that. An individual, especially in sales training, uh, who does this regularly, and I appreciate it, legendary trainer Brian Tracy. Right, this guy, that legend, legend in sales, excellent books, and I started my career in sales. One of the things that he always says, uh, and his thing is like, hey, uh, in this session, at the end of this session, maybe you got something, maybe you didn't get anything, but what's the one thing that you can start implementing today from this lesson? Right, like just asking that one question, I guess. Right, and I guess it's kind of simple, but do you think a question like that would be applicable to a dry subject? It could be, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It depends on the subject. Okay, it depends on the subject. So it's not it's universally... I would say generally, yes. What what can you start implementing? Absolutely. Okay. Um, some of them you'll have less beneficial answers for, depending on what you're studying. Like sure. in fiqh, yeah. right? Especially if it's fiqh that's not really relevant to you. Okay. Uh, but m most of the subjects that we find people studying, especially for spiritual improvement, yeah. they'll be able to make some kind of change. Gotcha. Right, whether it's uh, adding, you know, so a habit. So what can you change? What's the habit that you can add into your life? Or what's the bad habit that you can stop? Or what's the um, additional good thing that you can start doing? So these are external. I agree with yeah. you. And these are the general advices that we give, right? Okay. Uh, and these are going to be the answers that people basically are giving themselves rhetorically, right? Mm -hmm. But internally, if there's massive change or a revolution, a spiritual uh rejuvenation you'll find externally a lot of that follows okay right so you'll have more than just one practical answer okay and our focus is on the spiritual rejuvenation that basically is reflected externally okay so basic i like that term i like that spiritual rejuvenation through sahih muslim <laughs> hey hey okay maybe that's cool. on some ideas i got some ideas cool Mashallah. all right guys thank you for joining hope you guys benefit from this uh discussion uh again stay tuned for stuff uh with uh sheikh Salman hani here and look forward to some uh amazing uh, discussions on Sahih Muslim in the future. Uh, hope to continue some of the videos that we're going to be doing here in the future. Um, and I'll see you soon. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you got to explain that now because now this is, in our previous video we recorded, he's like, yeah, I'll explain in the next video. Well, what we're that supposed means. to have a video about uh, yeah. the book of dua. The and book the of dua. Gift, right? Actually, do you want to just go ahead and record that next? We can do that. Okay. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.